Thank you very much, Sean, with your obscure reference in there. Shave Tail Louie. I just had to look it up. It's a new recruit. It's basically what he's talking about. Damn. Kidding straight. Yeah, you need you need your, know, you need I the don't... headset. You need speak. You've been around for a while, mate. You got to get used to this. Yeah, I, I, I get caught out every so often. <laughs> I feel like I know enough, and then that happens. And Worst of all, it happened on camera, so I'm going to hear it all yep, through yep. the week. No headset. No headset. Please on. Jesse Cox laying down the law to his troops. Leonidas did win their last match, at which Jesse is heading. This time around, we're going to try and stick with Germanicus to see how it works out for them. So. We're going to be back on Thermopylae, if you're unaware. We're going to be doing, obviously, best of three on... Uh, not best of three, all three match is on uh, best of, on uh, Thermopylae, which is weird for me to say instead of a best of three. Yeah, I, 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 we, we could have gone for best of three, but we want to showcase... No, no, you want to see the possible. match. You want to see, yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, I think... you. So what we saw in that last game was Germanicus, Team Germanicus, Leinhardt leading up his guys there and trying to focus very much on keeping control outside of their base. They used the artillery to kind of... Uh, do a load of damage. They took the bait, which was Jesse Cox's hoplites, uh, but they left themselves open. They didn't go for the top of the map there. They left yeah. the hill completely open. And uh, from that, they, you, all of a sudden, you've just seen a wave of red. They also just face. had, uh, obviously, we saw in the hop gates, you know, the damage that they did to Jesse, but as we also pointed out, they had no infantry to defend them. So once those artillery got caught out, which they will do if there's no one covering them off, they just ran through them, ran through them, went through the uh, infantry and uh, ran through the archers and just piled on straight into the town. So, a lot of mistakes for Team Lionheart in the previous matchup. Let's see if they can make up for it. Here we go again. We're going to stick with Lionheart and play, uh, Agony Duck. I'm going to try and follow them. So, they're going to be the blue team for Team Germanicus. Let's see if they can get revenge. Yeah, so uh, what happened in the previous game, but really uh, kind of stuck out, was the fact that, yeah, like you were saying with the artillery, Artillery is amazing. It does so much damage to heavy infantry. It can do so much damage to any units which are, you know, not paying attention, uh, grouped up or, or, or blobbed up or, or just in a narrow, confined space, like the hot gates. Um, and with that, they get kind of tunnel vision. They won't pay attention to the rest of the map and they can't defend themselves anyway, so they have to rely on their teammates to do it. So um, they have to pick very careful places to play themselves in the map. Now, they can use consumables um, to, to kind of put barricades down and stuff like that, and, and then kind of put stakes down, and these things will, will stop a direct charge, but eventually they will get to them, and it's only a matter of time. It's all just buying time for your team to get in there to help. Yeah, you showed me the usage of the uh, the little stakes, the wooden stakes you can put down. If, if you don't spot them on the floor, you do a charge, you will basically kill your entire troops. It's uh, it's a very tricky little thing to spot. you got to zoom in and say, hang on a minute, wait, what are those things? And it's suddenly, uh, oh, we're going to have a uh, sound change from, uh, <laughs> from Lionheart. Maybe we, wanted, maybe we were too loud for him. Let's go to Agony Duck. So Agony Duck, as he did last time, he snuck around the back. He's going for the high ground, but you can see he's got one troop pushing along there, and obviously double troops pushing around the top. No vision just yet. And looking towards the towers, if you can see in the distance, you can see red flags on those towers, which means there's a unit that's on those towers. It gives them a much bigger uh, vision or a radius. So what happened over the top with Duck there? If we can get a vision back on what he was going for. So what he did is he's playing uh, uh, Mild Tardis and he has an ability called Drop Shields. And the two units he's taken are his um, Spartan Hoplites. And these units are light infantry He's dropped shields, so he's moving really quick. So the way he'll work within the forest, which is what he's doing, so he's leaving one unit of heavy uh, hoplites out in the open, and they do best on flat and open ground, while he's got two units of light infantry who are sitting in the woods waiting. If any fight goes on within that woods, he has a massive bonus, and plus, he also has dropped shields, so he can move really, really quick. The negative for that is obviously the fact of arrows, and anything that can tie him down is going to come to pieces. The Lionheart being the proper general this time. You can see his goal is units held, ready position. Pauls is doing the scouting. You see the cavalry charging back and forward, dodging out of that artillery. Meanwhile, Baron and Duck up in the top here, keeping hold of their position, holding the line. Duck taking a bit of flak from the, uh, is the Pelotop? Peltas. Pelt uh, oh, Peltas. What's happening here is, um, so to, uh, to War Zone here, he's using his um, Principes, mm -hmm. and with Principes, uh, we have an alt fire, so they can throw yep. their uh, Peeler. Peeler. Only that's have the, that's the one I was after, And they're Peeler. just throwing it into the unit there. So, so basically you only have like three, three sets three of shots. javelins, basically, yeah, three sets of shots with, with Peeler. It's like a range thing. It's actually really handy, say, if um, uh, uh, cavalry has charged you and he's making a run, getting back out of there again. 
you can maybe try and flank them down, do whatever range damage you can before you go for the charge yeah. onto people. And you can see how much damage has been taken there by Duck's unit. You know, it's down to about half strength. All of his uh, units have took a load of damage, and they're kind of pulling back. They're just trying to work out exactly where they're, both they're pushing through the hood forward. gates. That's what they seem to be doing. They're, look, they're creeping around the side, but look at the hood gates. You can see in the far distance, yeah. a lot of units pushing through the hood gates. There's not really anything yeah. so far from Leonid just to stop them there. Oh, so so what's going on here at the top? Baron has got his uh, legionaries and what he's uh, sorry his principal and he's put them into um, uh, attack their pseudo. So they're not going to take much damage from um, from range attack. Um, but puts, puts the shields yeah, up, basically. Yeah, shield, yeah, you can shield see block. You can so see. they're going to be go. able to slowly yeah. walk forward here. But uh, Duck and Baron have to make a decision what they want to do here because they don't have any missiles of their own, so they can be kited quite heavily on the top there. So... Uh, yeah, if we get to see what Duck is exactly going for, but it looks like he's uh, trying to uh, decide if he can rush them or if he's going to have to uh, pull back. Lionheart slowly pushing forward with the support of the archers, but look at this, they've completely got oh, the okay. Oh, again. just saw artillery hitting through there this time. Leonidas are trying to cover them off. This time, though, Leonidas have not pushed in, so we're not seeing Jesse Cox on the opposing team doing that, but Mecha has been engaged. Mecha, Paul's has managed to get around the back of it. Mecha's trying to get out of there. He's just gone for a scout, but look, they can see the cavalry closing in around. They've got completely through the hood gates unseen so far. Yeah, but it all comes down to, like, they, they're investing so much into defending this top of the hill. It's been a slow fight as well. Baron's just been slowly cut to pieces. And Ducky are bringing in more units. They really made a decision here. They're going yeah, three Baron's versus just been two. And yeah. it looks like they're just going to go for it. Baron's been slaughtered. Well, he's been pushing in slowly. Now oh. he's drawing back, but Baron's going in. So yeah, that's a, a little mix between them at the moment. Lionheart's drawing his way in there. Pauls has managed to get Mecha down pretty heavily. They've still managed to push through. Bit of a messy fight going on in the trees, but the hill definitely being won by Leonidas. Oh, there's Cavalry from behind from Rambler. Oh my god, it was a trap. Jake Fish was waiting it's in a the trap. woods. Yeah, that, I can't help it. It's a trap. No. We tried to come around the back. If we keep a, keep an eye on what's going on there, follow Duck. You know um, what? They cannot repel firepower of that magnitude. No, they can't. They got completely caught out. <laughs> okay. Oh, I had to put it in there. But you can see Lionheart. He's pushing forward. Here we go. Now they're going through. Pauls has, of course, been running around with that cavalry. They finally spotted Jesse Cox. So Jesse Cox has been holding the line with the spears just outside the hood gate. But tell you what... There they must go, have a lot of troops held back here, Leonidas. I think they've gone full on defensive. Duck's going to try and get around the side, but I'm not sure that he's going to get collapsed upon. This time, Rambler, again, like you said, he needs support. He needs the support with those cavalry pushing through the middle. So the call has come in from the uh, Team Germanicus here to push forward because there's so much on the hill right now. Mech so they're going to push through and, yeah, look at all that all pulling in. So what's going on really right now? That's Lionheart pushing forward, we can yeah. see. Well, he's got support as well, but they're going to collapse the top. And there you go. Jakefish once again coming in with his cavalry. It's completely doing through. a lot of damage. So Around Duck the back here, of him. Oh, that's going to be so painful. Yeah, so Doc is trying to use the woods for his advantage and that's what he's going for. Uh, like I said, he's got light infantry. They do great, just, uh, the best in the woods. Problem is, they're light, and when they get surrounded and tied down, they will get cut to pieces. But this is pretty much the so last chance line ours. They need to push here. Yeah, the thing with Leonidas is, like, like, while they've been putting a lot of investment on the top there, the rest of Germanicus are just piling through the middle now. They, they realize they've got positional advantage. The Hoodgate's pushing through. You can see Leviathan down the side. He's pulling out the support. He's got archers covering him off. That cavalry can do nothing for Mecha. That's the last unit he's got left. Hugo is on the roundup, corralling them in. Oh, Lionheart taking a big bit of damage, though. The artillery doing its work. They need to try and get that down. That's where I There's think we just saw Hugo's cavalry. Hugo's cav uh, cavalry peeled off to the left there. I think he's going for this artillery on the hill. Oh, Mech is trying to get through. He's going to go for a charge on oh. those infantry. And there you go. Oh, good but at the Lord. same time, Lionheart just loses about half of his unit there. That was his commander as well. I think he's... Uh, if your commander oh, dies... Oh, that's a massacre. He's going straight into the archers. But he got can't, a good he, charge. Oh, he got locked he's up, though. Surrounded. He's getting locked up. Lionheart's charge. used to this one. Lionheart trying, but this is the thing with cavalry. If you can't, uh, if you can't uh, hit them with your peel, if you can't just hit them with cavalry, they can just back off. So all of a sudden, that attack has just been frustrated by just one, one unit of cavalry. One single unit of cavalry has got around the back of them. You can see the damage it's done. Meanwhile, the cavalry in the background, Leonidas is piling on through into the base. This is a problem for the Jakefish has managed to get through. Rambler's been following him all the way back there. There is a few units of support, but they are sneaking up actually around the top. Is that Duck? Has Duck actually got himself Duck around? Duck might around? actually have survived and somehow be coming around the top. But you can see right now that uh, it looks like uh, Leonidas' team is going to just defend the base as much as possible. They have the oh, artillery to do it. Mech is causing so many problems with this one unit of cavalry. 
That's what happens. You have, if you have a good cavalry player, these people can just harass and harass. As oh, as they, oh he just got map. hit by his own artillery as well. But he just took absolutely wiped out straight there. I think it was straight there. I didn't see who it was. It was uh, with the... Yeah, side strafe. Side strafe just got absolutely routed. You can see his unit's yeah, bash, he's gone. bashing back. And like, Leinhardt's trying to keep a unit in, in play, but the problem is he's just so slow. All he can do is throw javelins, and, you know, the cavalry are quite tanky, especially Roman <gasps> cavalry. Oh, Smeka's oh, gone around again. the back of him again. He's done so many charges. Mecca doing work. Jesse Cox has been pushed all the way back into the base. This is actually... They are slowly surrounding Leonidas' base here, but Mecca is just causing so many problems. Leinhardt is getting frustrated by this one, that's for sure. It, not much you can do. Uh, it, this, is, this is where Side you have to... Move up, surely. Yeah, I, I mean, this is where you need to decide. Do you want to spend majority of your time trying to babysit? Or then in, in, in Hugo and Duke have got around the back there, so they've actually been locked up on the back. Mecca still getting around the side of side straight. Now he's finally, finally been caught a little bit there. Lionheart actually getting the defensive side straight, is pushing in his troops. Jesse Cox engaging on towards Lionheart and Leviathan. Oh, well, Mecca's going to go for a flank attack here right onto Lionheart. Is he going to go for that charge? Has yeah. he got the charge remaining? There you go, there's the charge right into the oh. back, and that's just damage everywhere. A lot of damage, though. A lot of the numbers looking like, though, it is just around about 100 difference at the moment. Germanicus in the lead. You can see they're starting to get that cap on. Only just, though. But you can see it's actually Hugo that got in there. He's actually routing his units up. Lineart's now going to support, get in there, get on the Shermanator. Shermanator's in trouble. His numbers are slacking. You can see Spiron's going to back away from this one. Lineart just Spiron. charging into the back of his own teammate there. He doesn't really care, he just wants to kill as many units in front of him at this point. There's a lot of cavalry still on the field for Team Leonidas, but they, they, it's the infantry they need to keep alive. And right now, Jesse Cox, using uh, his commander and namesake of his Team uh -oh. Leonidas quite well. Jake Fish is sneaking around the side. Jake Fish is coming around. That's going to be a cavalry getting around the back of all these as well. So that's going to be backing up Mecca, who was already causing problems. There he is, he's managed to get in the back of Sagir on, on the side there. Now they're trying to get in there. Lionheart, a lot of troops still alive, getting in towards cap radius. This is going to start causing problems. So you can see the player numbers still very, very close. Down to actually 50 troops difference between the two teams. So this is still a very tight fight. I think the thing that's surprising right now is Diplex's artillery is still alive. You know when Mecca's cavalry was breaking through the center like that? That was a chance for him to go far, but it didn't. So Jake Fish's cavalry was the one that was actually pushing to cap out uh, Germanicus is based, if I remember right. Yeah. They're the ones that went all the way along the top, came in. Oh, look at that artillery just coming in. You can see in the, you see in the background, the ga cavalry is making a feline for the artillery now. They've realized how much danger it's, uh, it, and how much damage it's bringing in. They're going for it. Yeah, and I think everyone Jake's on the hill has now come back into the base. And you see they've taken a bit of damage, but maybe they've come back all together just at the right time here. This is such a close game. This is a very, very tight fight, that's for sure. Good defensive work from Leonidas, but the question is, have they got enough? off in the pocket you can wow. see total war zone moving in so malakath with him jesse cox is about to get surrounded here lionheart's going to come around the back of him that's going to cause his troops to have a little morale question but no he's realized it lionheart if he does that he's going to leave his own troops completely exposed he's having to get around and support himself look his morale's gone his morale's yeah, gone that, on those troops. that unit just got completely collapsed but then few men to come in so it's, it's buffed up a little but yeah and and and, and jesse cox here using his hoplites the best effect and he's just you were saying he was going to get surrounded. He's playing with Hoplites and uh, Leonidas. That basically means he's got Shield Bash, he's got Push, he's got Warcry. He isn't going far. He's just going to constantly be able to stay in the fight for a long time. Sagiron so finally getting involved here. Obviously only Javelins, but you can see the complete flank effect that he had on Total War Zone. Total War Zone destroyed. Warrior of Spartan very low. He's going down. Shermanator and Total War Zone, just as few little units they have left in there, is what's keeping them in. You can see the numbers starting to dwindle here. Oh, that was beautiful. Good positioning from Sekiro. And getting around the back there, completely raining down oh, fire. Baron He's getting in. a little bit of team damage in there, because team that's the big thing in this team damage yeah. is a huge problem. But you can see the numbers quickly, quickly falling. It's a 300 uh, men different right now. Oh my God. Germanicus may well be tying things up here. They are moving in for cap control. That cavalry could be the only thing right now it can save. It's still Mecca, of course it is. It is Mecca. <laughs> he's the only one still standing with cavalry. And he's been chased the whole time. Who is that chasing him? He's going to get back around the back of Sagiron. Yeah. But finally, Jesse Cox is back up. He's still got almost a full unit in there. Prince of Macedon also in trouble. You can see Lionheart has engaged Jesse Cox around the side. Jesse's getting surrounded. This is very much the last surviving 180 troops 
of Team Leonidas. Team Germanicus surely have this one in the back. Mecca's <laughs> making one last cavalry charge. It's <laughs> going to be onto Sagiron, but he's just running headlong into multitudes of troops. They are going to go down as well. That's Mecca out of the game. And the rest he's of the still team, got it's clean up time. Tiny unit cab in the background there, but Jesse <laughs> Cox is just completely surrounded, trying to hold his base by himself. Well, at least he didn't push on straight through this time. You can see the cap now starting to come in. 8%, 9%, that's going to start ticking up. Teach <laughs> your man a wreck. <laughs> oh, it's Leon Leinhardt, that's it. Jesse's in trouble. He's surrounded. And he's held off quite well, and he's done a lot of damage. He's not. Oh, yeah, he's dead now because of just, uh, just constant firepower. Yeah, just purely being surrounded. There's there's only so much uh, you can take, but definitely the Battle of the 300 for Jesse Cox, that's for sure. Just 56 troops remain for Leonidas, and Germanicus are going to tie things up. Oh, what a battle. Definitely a little bit slow pace this one. Lionheart played it well. They sat back. You could see how they controlled it. They pushed around the hood gates completely untouched and then around the top they actually lost the battle on the top but they had full control in the middle and that's really where they did the damage yeah and it, it, you, you know it's feeling out on the top of the hill not over commit, uh, committing to it at all and then deciding to uh, to, to walk back when they realized it oh actually Doc deciding, okay, we're going to lose at the top of the hill here. Let's go around I'm just going to rush through. Yeah. I'm just going to leave the guys behind. They're dead. There's nothing we can do about that. I'm going to rush around the back of the base again and see what I can do. And it, and it came down to realizing that they were going to lose on one flank and just committing straight down the center and just pushing in. And that cav work from Mecca was really good. But at the end of the day, if a tide is turning in that kind of numbers and they're pushing forward into the base, there's not much you can do. Yeah, fantastic stuff overall here in the studios in Cologne. So, all tied up. Germanicus back in the game against Leonidas on Thermopylae. We're going to have another map on Thermopylae. Lots of games to go today as well. Then three maps on Salernum, then three more on Marathon, and then three more on the Community Choice for map four. Will we see Thermopylae again? That's the question. It's going to be down to you guys to get yourselves involved. Don't forget also, you can sign yourselves up. It's uh, totalwararena.com slash ESL, I believe. Get yourself signed up for the closed alpha and maybe you could be joining these guys and having some fun in here. But uh, there it is on your screens. Don't forget, get in there, sign up, get playing. You may even be able to play me or you. Yeah, you're well, easy to if, spot. You're you're CA dog, yeah, but, so yeah, you're I, very easy to find. Yeah, if if I, if you come across me in a game at Total War Arena, you're in trouble. I mean, <laughs> I play a lot of games. I was a pro gamer once. You <laughs> I'm, know? A, I'm a pro. I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd crush <laughs> almost anyone. Um, yeah, not sure about that. Not sure about that. One. That's, that's, Okay. <laughs> Not the same about but this is this is the uh, the back end that we're getting to see here. This is obviously where they, they make the choices. So you can see they've got the the tier five and uh, two tier four units. Yeah. So what you're seeing here, uh, this was Duck. He was playing as uh, Miltardis, and he had his um, two units of uh, um, Spartan Hoplites, and he has one unit of his uh, tier five um, Forex Hoplites. And those guys, he, he baited them. He was just like, this unit here, this one's going to take a lot of damage. Yeah focus on this one here. Pay attention to this one right in front while of me snuck around. while I try and push around the back with my light units. And they went through the woods and they just came around the back and they did a load of damage, but it looks like they mauled everything on that they hill. Ba basically, everybody drew towards them. That's, yeah. that's how Lionheart did his push. With, yeah, with they did the a load of damage, but they couldn't win that fight. But what you do in this game and the best way to play, take a chunk out of your opponent, do a bit of damage, yeah. don't commit to suicide. Your units are better alive than they are dead, no matter what, because you're always there. You're always around. You can bring morale down from your enemies by being in proximity. More importantly, they have to deal with you. Well, they can't yeah. just avoid you. So it. it's I mean, great to just it was, harass. Uh, who was it? It was Duck and Hugo. Duck and Hugo that got it into the base. They were the first people in cap radius. And that, like you said, that drew the entire Leonidas team in towards their own town, completely taking their eye off the fact that Lionheart, etc., were all pushing up there. Because we actually saw Lionheart starting to take a hell of a lot of damage from the artillery. But once the attention got drawn, it was like, oh, Christ, move, move my units, move my units, get out of there. So they had to draw themselves back. The Mopoli will be played once again. You can see the players having a discussion, sorting themselves out, getting their tactics sorted out, see what they're going to go with in this next matchup. Are we going to see Leonidas get themselves back in there? They kind of sat defensive in that one, and it didn't work for them. Yeah, and it, it, you, so it's an interesting one. So you can play, um, when, especially when you have the communication you have. You can be like, right, guys, we're just going to sit back and wait. But the thing is, you start losing control of the game. You're not, you're not 
pushing the initiative. You literally give the initiative to your opponent, and sometimes that's all it needs because you start making mistakes, you start to just react to your opponent, and that's what happened there. They they seen so much on the hill, so they start sending more and more up a hill, all of a sudden, straight down the middle, and the base was under threat. Just waiting to get it on the way is Levi. Is it Levi Thon? Because it's a 4 0 so. at the end, he's, so. He's a happy chappy. Yeah. It's represented, it seems. It's represented. <laughs> Throwing up the signs. <laughs> There's Mecca there in the middle. Uh, he, his cavalry work was really good in that game, but it, it almost slowed down uh, Lionheart's uh, advance. He was going in, and they were just going to flood that base before the artillery could really do that much damage. But then they kind of pulled back a bit. Mm. And that really didn't have to happen. They, they could have just, right, we'll, I'm going to lose a few range units, but let's get into there, let's get the killing done. But uh, it's difficult sometimes to leave your teammates behind, to make the decision to, you know, cut and, cut and run. That's what Duck did at the top of the hill, um, and that's what Lionheart didn't do. He wanted his teammates to come with him. He wanted them to all push in, and, and I think that probably is what uh, decided in the end. You see a lot of famous faces here that you guys may know throughout YouTube, or maybe, of course, the total war hardcore players. Here we go again, though. Game three. The final one on Thermopylae, or is it the final one? That's the question. It's down to you guys to decide. Let's see where people are pointing. Where's Mecha going to go? That's more importantly, because he was the, the danger man, certainly. Looks like he's going to the hood gates. I wonder if he's going to try and rush on through. Let's follow Team Leonidas for this one, though. That's going to be Jesse Cox and Mecha this time around. Maybe try and keep a track of those. We can see Leonidas setting themselves out. So you can see Mecha in the middle there. He's kind of giving them the rule set of how they're going to go down on this one, it seems. So yeah, you can see the team set up there. Um, Polis as well is another player who's been uh, pushing forward in the Lionheart's team, Team Germanicus, but uh, he seems to be getting himself cut up quite quickly, or at least he's uh, taken on for the team in a lot of ways. So we're gonna follow Team Leonidas. It's gonna be Jesse Cox, as you can see on your screen once again. Got his uh, spearman in there. The, are they the hoplites? They are the Forax hoplites. Yeah, the um, hoplites, yeah. You can yeah. see, uh, these are heavy infantry, and abilities you got with, um, with Leonidas um, is Warcry? Is it Battlecry? Battlecry. Battle that's cry. it. That's it's the boost cry. morale. Yeah, that's the boost morale, and that is a very useful ability. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. Thanks, Jesse. Shield Bash, of course, is is the other one, which uh, bash, he doesn't yes. have, I think. He well, does, uh, it but does you have. need to be engaged. All oh, right, you uh, need to be engaged. Okay, so when F you're engaged, it's basically like 300. You just kick yeah. the guy. You just smash the guy with your shield, and they go flying. Sim back. Simple controls. W A S D. You can see R O C T. They're the, the two abilities. F and G are your uh, only if your general's alive. Is that correct? Yeah. The, uh, so you which is the charge out. and what is D on this? one. So you will lose uh, your push and your battle cry. Right, that's the push, that's the yeah. push. You can you can start driving people back, so you yeah. can try and break the line, etc. Uh, and the V is actually one of the consumables, so it's, like it's the shield, the hardened shields, isn't it? Uh, yeah, you can, uh, but those are, uh, unless on range and artillery and so on, they are the only ones that um, kind of come into play. The others are kind of buffs before games go on. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to see with Jesse Cox here, so he's taken heavy infantry unit and he's placed them into the woods. Now obviously, that's good as long as he comes up against another heavy infantry unit. But he comes up against a light infantry unit in the woods. He's gonna, uh, it's gonna hurt. But anyway, he's got good vision. Um, I've been to see exactly what units are coming up behind him. Um, but either way, they're kind of just once again kind of scouting out. You can see cavalry there from the uh, from Team Germanicus. I mean, there's Jake, is that Polis? There's Polis there, just hanging around, scouting out, checking that there's not just full down pressure coming straight down the middle, which is the most direct route to the base. Um, but at the same time, it's the most obvious reason uh, about it. He spotted Lionheart in it's the woods. Team captains coming through. It's fight. the team captains facing off against each other. Jesse's got his side turn, though. That's not a good position. There we go. He's going to quickly try and turn his position. Meanwhile, Prince of Macedon getting the heck out of there. So his cavalry doesn't want to get caught out in the woods by any troops. But that's actually both sets of heavy troops. You can see in the distance, Hugo's also testing uh, the Prince there. So he's going to draw him back in. You can see both teams, they don't have a lot of vision. Oh, hello. Someone's creeping on through the hill just above Jesse. And yeah, the ping goes pinged. down. Yeah, <laughs> straight getting pinged away. straight away. Jesse going to take a peek at this one. Can't see who duck, it is. It's Duck, duck again once with again. His light infantry. With his light infantry. He's going to try and creep around the back again. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Doesn't look like they're pushed through the hood gates, actually. You can see uh, on the on the minimap just above the, the road, the hood gates haven't really been pressured much. And actually, 
Germanicus are drawing back towards their base. A lot of cavalry movement in the middle of the field this time for uh, Germanicus. Yeah, cavalry is obviously the greatest. Uh, so we got Mecha and Prince of Macedon with the cavalry here for Team Leonidas. And they're just... Well, they just spotted, I think it's an artillery unit. Yeah, just, just directly hiding. Diplex. There he is, just off the bottom of the screen. That's Mecha's, what Mecha wants. Oh. Mecha's going to go for it. Mecha's going to try and get on there. He's, He's going to try and draw it. pulls around, but he's still got a set of units. They've completely left oh, him. Oh, Mecha's going to get around the back. He took a big hit, though, straight to the face, and he's actually going to get completely charged down. Oh, no! It's going to route him back to Pauls. Pauls did a grand job at defending there. Mecha almost sneaking through, getting the artillery down, but he took too much damage. And, and Duck as well has just gone into the base with his light infantry and he's gone straight for the artillery. This might be a quick one, guys, because with a cavalry advantage like that and the artillery still being up, they took a risk going for it and uh, it looks like it's not paying off at all. This has definitely not gone well for them. You can see they're getting around the back as well, that cavalry. More importantly, Mecha's units are routed and the cavalry, we saw how important Mecha was in the defense for Germanicus in the previous matchup. He has still got one set of troops available. Meanwhile, look at Jesse Cox. He's creeping on past. He's going sneaky, sneaky. But the problem is, with his sneakiness, when he gets around the back, his team need him. It's not the fact, it's the fact that there's cavalry and artillery uh -oh, as well. Spotted. So it's they're not coming. like he's, uh, it's an easy trip. Oh, they're just going to pile on through. He's grouped up. No, spread yourself out. Get your defensive line set up quickly, quickly. Line. Rambler. Oh, Rambler just realized that last second Jesse's going to get himself in position. But there's infantry on the right, on the left here. So yeah, I don't it's think it's totally a. Uh, no, he doesn't know which one. way to flank it against. If he, he turns just gets around on the right, Rambler's literally <laughs> corralling him around. Well. Lionheart's getting himself set up. Jesse's in all sorts of trouble. He's just like, I don't know how to fight oh, this. Infantry right oh, infantry Oh, that was an infantry well. rush straight through. Lionheart's going to set himself his second lot up. So the way it works out, you can see obviously just, just used his shield bash to try and push them back. Lionheart's going to get around. The flank on Jesse's troops on the right-hand side, that's not a good position. Lionheart's going to come around the side there. Rambler's getting himself set up. You can see they're going to charge into each other. Oh, cavalry from behind. This is, this is not good for Jesse. He's completely surrounded here, and you can see in the, in the it, it, this, okay. is, this is bad. So <laughs> it, it is bad, but looking at the numbers, they're actually pretty even. So Jesse is actually drawing away a lot of people. You can see Lionheart's here and Rambler's here. So what else is happening around the battlefield that maybe they're drawing the attention to Jesse that maybe his team could actually be gaining advantages elsewhere? Most definitely. He's using Battle Cry and Hold the Line here. So basically, he's doing everything he can to stay in the fight as long as possible. So he is buying time for his team, but it's what the team can do with it. The cavalry advantage Rambler as well. coming oh, in again. There he goes. And look yeah. at the morale breaking on that unit there. Completely surrounded. And there's a route, and it's probably going to be followed by another unit very soon. But uh, yeah. Hoplite units don't die quickly, and even more so when it's Leonidas as the commander. Now he's got support coming in. Jakefish goes a charge. A bit of a headless chicken charge to try and save uh, Jesse there. Maybe he's just screaming for help on comms. You can see the rest of it. A lot of cavalry charging suddenly going on. So Hugo's been drawn into this one. So everybody focusing down on Jesse. Maybe he said a few words at the start of the fight that's drawn their attention. I don't know. <laughs> but the rest of the team, you can see. Uh, is that Duck still at the back? Duck is still at the back. You can see him at the back of the base. Duck is still in there. So He's, they pulled? Is they've that got a lot of people up on that hill. Artillery? Now they've just all turned around. Jesse's team's all just turned around. So Leonidas spotted this one. And look at this. They've drawn the attention away. Jesse's still alive. What's left of him, at least, and there's a lot of action still going on on the base, so... But here's the thing, he's just completely unsupported. I mean, they're doing what they can, but this cavalry advantage is, uh, is starting to uh, really tell. Oh, he's going to try and get to these, get these archers, but uh, you can see Rambler is just like, nope, cutting him off. No, actually, he's going to run straight he past. He just missed the oh charge my completely. God. And that's actually given Jesse a big advantage. Yeah, I think that was Rambler doing a charge. Oh, I think he was going for a charge on, I think that's Prince of Macedon's cavalry yep. up here. And uh, now he's and actually going to get surrounded because he rambles. Morale's broken on that uh, cavalry unit. He's getting the flank bonus as well. So Jesse's actually still in the game. And more importantly, doing a heck of a lot of damage on the back of Rambler. <laughs> Shield bashing into the back of Rambler's cavalry. I think Rambler actually just hit um, O for Perseverance, which is the ultimate ability for um, Scipio. And that means his unit is uncontrollable right now, but has a, a 200%, uh, like, uh, I think it was plus 200 to melee defense. So he's difficult to kill now, but completely uncontrollable. Uh, so I think he kind of realized he was surrounded there, propped his ability, and he was just like, right, this fight is not going to end quickly.
This has been a very mixed fight. You can see in terms of numbers in the top right and left of your screen, it's around 100 difference. Germanicus just in the lead at the moment, but as you just saw, Jesse showed us, there's still a lot of units in defense still for Leonidas holding around the base. So this has been like a half and a half push. Question is, has it worked out for them? Jake's about to get taken down there. Jesse almost out of the game here. Rambler finally getting support from Hugo in side strafe. And they can see also it's Prince of Macedon's been locked up there. So the cavalry units, more importantly for Germanicus, they still have a lot of cavalry. I saw, I caught a glimpse of Mecca a moment ago. Um, he didn't have a lot left. Is Mecca still alive in any way, shape or form? I mean, uh, on, on points wise, uh, uh, even on army uh, set wise, I think what's happened here is both teams kind of made their pushes and now they've kind of fallen both back defended, each, yeah. So. There we go, Jesse's unit's completely gone, so, so now that, he is in spec. This. There's loads still alive here. Uh, they still have artillery, they still have ranged. The only thing right now for... Uh, uh oh what's this coming around the back of the base? Oh, Something's no, no. creeping in the back of the base, I didn't see who it was. Is that Duck again? Duck, I think Duck snuck around the back of Leonidas' base once again. If we can grab uh, Mecca's view as well and see... Oh, it's Baron, it's Baron. Baron. Baron's always with Duck. It's Baron and Duck. They're a gruesome twos and they're creeping around the back there. There's Duck! I knew it would be Duck! These he's dudes. using the woods as a, as a kind of highway because he's, yeah. he's using those light infantry. He's using the woods to improve his speed and, and more importantly his combat building. And right now Gunnar has that one catapult left. He has one left and he needs to find a good place to hit it and look right that. They are being surrounded once again. Well, thanks to Jesse Cox for becoming our full cameraman now while his units have died. <laughs> he's, uh, he's showing us everything he can. Well, so he's uh, giving us the full view. Baron set himself up. He's waiting for support and actually waiting to see if anyone can draw towards him. Now, there's actually archers coming his way. However, with Baron, with the units he has, he can just put the shields up and pretty much cover off everything that rains down on him. Yeah, so we've got five minutes remaining in this game. It can come down to a points issue or one team can come on for the push. And you see that artillery just thrown in the fire. Straight. Oh, and there's artillery on return fire. This is going to get really interesting. I thought all the artillery for Team Germanicus had been killed, but that is not the case. And look at the range it has in it. And the fact that because they're more concentrated, it's so easy to work out where you're shooting into. Warrior of Sparta getting rained down upon that. They Doesn't need to make a decision what they want to do here, because if they can, they shut up in the base, it's fine. But they're, they're leaving it in the hands of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the game's judges. Look here. at that. Pauls has oh, actually snuck in. Vision. Oh, he got himself vision. They pulled away, left the tower, and now Pauls. Pauls is oh, going to have full vision pieces. for his team of this entire base. So they can see the exact setup they have there, which we see, see Pauls going in. Pauls is going to try a little run in there. Yeah. A lot of archers actually firing on them, but now you can see the vision. Gunner just got completely nailed by artillery in the middle of the base. You see that fire coming in. It's like something like Starship Troopers when the, you see the shells coming in. And, and there you go. Just more and more mayhem and in gonna, the middle. This is going to be big. If that artillery can hit something crucial, they are actually bunched up pretty heavily here. He wants like, to aim for the heavy infantry. Like Sagiron maybe getting towards him. Pauls is actually pretty much routed. Yeah, his infantry that was there has gone so they've lost the tower which means they've lost the big vision they had a moment ago dr bruce is trying to engage on the hill but look the at the hill advantage is a baron he should be able to charge down on them here and actually work out well for them dr Prost needs to move and he is he's getting out of there he should be safe yeah warriors trying to to to, to kind of oh where they going look at the, the archery cavalry. the cavalry coming up there baron just pushing them down there perfect placement for the cavalry to come piling in around the side hugo trying to get close took a lot of damage actually there i think dr Prost just basically turned and just put a volley straight on towards him that cavalry not going to do not a great much deal left of them there yeah but they're coming back in again well, the Vython's making a charge as well. He's coming into town. Malakath completely getting caught off. Where they're trying to hold all the positions. It's, it's exactly what they do. They can't get drawn too much into this one. Baron's got them surrounded. Warrior of Sparta's taking a lot of damage here. Total War Zone's bringing in some more troops. Hugo, meanwhile, making this charge with his cavalry on the screen there. Total War Zone's going to get around. He's going to flank onto Baron here. But Warrior of Sparta's actually been flanked already. He's taking too much damage. Total War Zone cavalry finally right getting in, in there. The cavalry, I mean, yes, he's against the archers, but actually they should be able to take down that cavalry when they've got him surrounded that much. Yeah, but it's Total Warzone coming in to try and help there, and you can see that they're cutting. That unit is just not much left of that cavalry, and they're going to break. But look at that artillery constantly firing, and Sherman here deciding to, uh, to back off a bit. And look, they're stuck again, coming in with his uh, Tier 5 
uh, hoplites. And uh, this hill fight is going <laughs> push, the right Push, push, push. You can see the arrows being drawn. You need to go here. You need to get onto Baron. That's where you need to go. Total Warzone's going to do it. To Pross is trying to fight on them. Now Baron's going to get flanked, but it's not enough. I think it may have taken a lot of too much damage. They didn't get the uh, flanking bonus. They didn't get the routing. <laughs> You can see circles being drawn on there. That's the beauty of this. You can just hit yeah. F2, draw, generals can draw on the minimap, and that's exactly what they're having to do right now. Yeah, and that artillery is hitting uh, just as much the teammates as the enemy right now. They're using this high ground advantage to really do a lot of damage, and uh, Jesse's trying to show as much as possible with our drawing tool, which I, uh, I'm happy for. Yeah. And you can, but the height advantage here is uh, with... Uh, Pross should come out on top of this one. There's, there's three there, but Pross has got archers against the spears and you can see the archers are coming out on top oh he's also got the slightest of hill advantages for the the guys at the back here which is what's winning out i think for this battle yeah definitely but i think having an artillery piece still being out firing always oh. makes a bit of an edge so as well baron's about to go down total war zone is going to do that but look at leviathan leviathan has a big chunk of units in the base right now and they're actually getting the flanking bonus if you look at the numbers you can see it's a 200 plus advantage for uh, Germanicus right now, so Germanicus looking good. Maybe going to be taking this one 2-1 one with C. So Aaron is going to get drawn back, but there is a big chunk of unit for Germanicus now in the base. Yeah, definitely, and it, it all comes down to losing cavalry early as well. But with only 40 seconds remaining, there is always a chance of this coming down to the judges on the scoring board. So we'll have to see how this one goes. They have to be really quick, but it does. That cap is coming over, and the points that they're racking up because of it is massive. And yeah, you can see the amount of damage that's been done by uh, Team uh, Germanicus is, is is still quite significant. And so there's loads of charges going on. Total War Zone trying to do a flanking maneuver of his own. You can see Leviathan. Oh, a Shimonet is not going to last long enough, though. Leviathan's going to be able to pull out of that one. He needs support. He needs everyone to get around the back of them. And I think Leviathan's going to take... Yeah, Shimonet has just dropped, which has freed up Leviathan's other set of troops to block off this flanking maneuver that Total War was trying himself there. So with a push on either side, it comes down to... Uh, what we're going to see. Who got this one? Points. <laughs> It's Germanicus. Yes, Germanicus are in the studio nearest to us, which is why you can hear them. They will come out on top of that one. So 2-1 on Thermopylae. Despite losing the first map, they do work the way back in there. And the defensive sort of split play this time from Leonidas. They like half went forward, half stayed in the base. Kind of counted off. And you've got to look towards, obviously, Mecha with the artillery. If it had gone onto that artillery, if it had caught it out so close at the start, but then just got caught in the cavalry charge. They, they were pushing forward, they, they were scouting with the cavalry, but what happened is they got a bit too eager. They wanted to do something, they wanted to do some damage. They seen an opportunity, they tried to go downhill. Artillery caught them, slowed them down, and that was enough time for another charge. When you're playing cat and mouse of cavalry like that, you only need one mistake, and you're trying to control three units in different trajectories, you're gonna get caught out, and that's what happened. They were surrounded, and you lose one cav player that much so early, and the other cavs <laughs> can just keep watching. Team Germanicus happy in the studios. Warriors That's Spartan. the Leonidas. It's yeah. nothing. There's it's nothing. nothing. There's, still, there's still plenty of maps to go. Don't worry, guys. Coming up is going to be Salernum. So they've got plenty of time to get themselves back into that. But 2-1 for Thermopylite for Team Germanicus here in the studio. Uh, what do we make of that one overall? I thought both all of those games were actually quite close. Yeah. At times you didn't think they were, and, and they, they started to go back and forth, and you couldn't really get a hang of it. You thought what, in, our, in our second game, yeah. it looked like it was it was all over. Then all of a sudden, a, a strong push through the middle, and all of a sudden, a Germanicus is in the base and pushing in. Um, in that last one, it, it was very much a, we'll push, and then everything fell apart, yeah. and then it's just like, right, okay, doesn't matter, let's just hold up here and see what we can do. But being surrounded like that with all the, the height advantage that that brings for, for the attacking side, defenders have nowhere to go and that artillery was just raining in constantly. And you need to have that cavalry still alive to threaten that artillery and at least keep some players back to maybe defend it. If you don't have to worry about cav, well, just go where you want. What's <laughs> going to stop you? And that's exactly what Germanicus did. Let's get over and have a word with their team captain, Lionheart. Thank you so much, Lee. Thank you so much, James. Great game. Of course, Elliot joining me and Lionheart, sir. Hello. First of all, congratulations. You Thank take you. the first map match of the day. How, how was that for you? Uh, well, team's done really well. I mean, the, uh, the first game we had, it got a bit scrappy towards the end and we were, you know, working out which flank we were actually going to push on and we pulled it together in the end. But it's been, it's been pretty close to both games down to the wire. You know, the time has been ticking down and... Yeah, the t team's done really well, pulled together, and uh, yeah, it's been, it's been great. 
Now, of course, uh, strategy was always something that you were playing into. How much did uh, your strategy pan out the way you wanted it to? Was there <laughs> elements of luck in it? Or, or would you say, no, this is exactly business as planned? Um, yeah, totally, totally the strategy we, <laughs> we planned. We, um, I think the, the second game, the strategy went a, a, a lot better, a lot more fluid. Um, we, we learned and adapted our strategy um, quite quickly from the first game, which was focusing on trying to pin the other team on one flank. That first game, we held them up on the left, and we just pushed through the center, pushed through the hot gates, which, uh, which looked awesome. And uh, we employed the same thing in the, center, in the second game, where we actually allowed them to come to us. They were playing with loads of calves through the center, all pulled back, dealt with um, Jesse coming through. I saw his spears trying to go for me there and uh, turned around a couple of heavy infantry charges and he was down and then all just pushing through together, combined effort. Meanwhile, we had um, Baron flanking around the back with three untouched units of heavy infantry tumbled down the hill at the end, their heavy infantry charge wipe out. Now, an, an, an interesting point in that third map, and I'll just jump into that there, was something that we saw, and I know morale's a big element for your unit, something you need to take into account, um, but we saw something where the unit kind of gained, what was it, 200 uh, 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 health, I believe it was. Talk us through that. So, but yeah, basically there's an there's a order in the game called Oath of, Oath of Perseverance, um, which is actually based on a, a historical uh, reference. Um, uh, Scipio basically ordered... Uh, his fleers, should we call waverers in battle, to swear an oath to never leave again. So it's based on that. So basically, when you hit that order, when you hit oath of perseverance, they get they get a morale boost. They're never allowed to leave. You, you, you're uncontrollable. You can't control them. You completely lose control, but you gain morale. So you're, you're in battle. You just keep swinging your sword and you don't stop. Uh, it's di if you disengage as an enemy, the, the order sort of stops. It cancels. So that's kind of the counter to it. Like if someone hits it, you get out basically. But yeah, that's what it's based on. Um, the morale itself. We've, it's like really, really, I like to think of it as much more emotional than traditional Total War. We've made it so we're very up and down, so it's kind of second to second stuff. And th there was a lot of that going on, right? There was one moment where one of the units just got completely surrounded and you just saw its morale just drop entirely and, and it just got destroyed. So that's really, really exciting to see that actually sort of getting pulled off. So that's great. Very, very cool stuff. Now, of course, you watching at home, you can talk to us and you can ask us all sorts of questions using that hashtag, hashtag TW Arena. And somebody who's done just that is Alex at Riddington. I'm going to read this out now. The question is, are you looking to expand maps and base on real geographic again? What features will be available in the shop using Steam Wallet? So the, to go no, no, that was for you. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> uh, to go to the first, the first question uh, to do with the maps. Yes, we're definitely going to expand the maps. We're going to do as many as we can. We've got two in progress at the moment that we're specifically looking at. Uh, we like to base them on obviously real events, real places um, like we have Marathon and um, from Upper Lai. Uh, so they're in the works. Hopefully you'll see those soon and we'll look to add to that catalogue later. With reference to uh, monetization, if you will, uh, we have not monetized the game right now in Alpha. We're looking to monetize later. Early days. However, however you, you can go in the game now as an Alpha. You can get gold. Uh, uh, by playing a, a daily battles with, your, with a commander and as you get that gold you can spend it on things like uh, uh, painting your units different colors uh, you can buy like paint packs and stuff like that to apply um, so yeah we, we will look to introduce the steam wallet monetization systems later but right now it's basically if you like you get gold for free and you get to spend that gold for free in the game so get in quick <laughs> awesome stuff get in quick it is the closed alpha you can get into this closed alpha if you head over right now you're watching this online using totalwar.com slash ESL. Get in, get into the closed alpha. These fine gentlemen will be waiting for you there. You can pitch your wits <laughs> against there. James Dogbert has already called out the entire internet saying they should look out for him when they meet him. So really do do it. Totalwar.com slash ESL. Lionheart, I'm sure we're going to see lots more. Are you excited about the next, uh, oh, yeah. next map, sir? Can't wait to check out the next map and see what the team's going to come up with strategy-wise. It's going to be good. Excellent. We wish you very, very good luck. For the moment, we're just going to take a very short break. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be lots more Total War Arena. Enjoy. <laughs>